Morning everybody, Rusty from the Rusty Razor. Got another shave of the day for you, and today we're going to be doing Sterling's Ramblin' Man. Well, kind of a different scent. There's definitely cedar, the sandalwood, I think a bit of, a little bit of citrus in there. Almost has a, uh, I guess, a juniper style scent to it and then there's something in the background there I mean, it's kind of a musky kind of a greenish musky scent to it so there we go when you lather it up that uh, a lot of that muskiness goes away you get more of the woody scents coming off of it kind of a almost like a freshly mowed grass or alfalfa sorted to it and we're also going to be using the crisp razor with some Astro Blades. I think uh, second use of these. All right, with the go with the crisp, followed up with a little bit of Stetson. Yeah, I break up that. It's like I was like, oh, I'm just going to use Old Spice, and I'm like I've been using Old Spice a lot, so we're going to something a little different. All right, so we already have some Barbasol 1919 on the face. This stuff works pretty good as a pre-shave. You can use it as a regular shave. And I know that Sinatra Lennon likes to use it every once in a while because he's a Barbasol guy. But I like it as a pre-shave. Works good for me that way. All right. Doesn't take much. Just like a pea-sized amount and just put it all over your face and you're good to go. Hmm. I'm definitely getting that kind of a oh suds everywhere. Oh, uh, my brain is working overtime here. Kind of memories are popping out of my head as I'm smelling this. Ever have that where you smell something and it activates some memory cells? kind of like what's going on right now as I'm smelling this one hmm I'm smelling freshly baled hay alfalfa for some reason all right let's just go to town with this crisp razor it's kind of a nice razor it works similar to a Oh, Kinksy Gillette. That's really slick, too. Hear that blade working? That Astra. I should try as a... Um, like one of those 7 o'clocks. Try one of these 7 o'clock blacks. And the next time I use this to see how it works together. Because a slightly mild razor combined with some... Aggressive blades seem to work out pretty decently. I, uh, when it comes to hay scent, it's like I bail a lot of hay in my day. A lot of hay. We're talking wagon loads upon wagon loads. Filling up. It's like started baling hay. I think I, when I was started working inside the barn, stacking it when I was like nine or ten, and eventually progressed to the uh, uh, crew that's out on the wagon on the behind the baler. Before the age of the round bales. You'd have a setup where you have your tractor towing the, uh, the baler, the single square baler, hooked up to the PTO. Then the, the uh, baler is hooked to, you know, wagons hooked up to it. So it's like, 
it's like as the tractor's going down the, the wind rows it's like basically what you do is you go out and uh you have the mower which you know it's like a big giant you ever hit see those hedge clippers you know it's like electric hedge clippers like imagine a big one it's uh like 15 feet long or more and you're going through the hay the field and you got that the arm goes out and you just mow it right off at the ground level you know a cup like three inches or so two inches from the ground and that, then it would just lay in the field there for a day then you come along with a rake hooked up to the pto so it's like Kind of sits at an angle and it's got these big tines on it. There's like a circle going around and it just windrows it, just picks it up and then windrows it into a row. And then it would sit there for another day or so in the windrows drying out because you do not want wet, damp um, alfalfa or clover and all that stuff uh, wet because it will just get moldy inside the when you bail it it'll just be moldy and you, you got more problems than anything and there have been barn fires because of people bailing their hay when it's wet and it will combust because it'll start fermenting and heat up and next thing you know it's like poof, you gotta burn the barn yeah not fun but so after it's all dried out and then you come along with the baler would go down and it would the machine is like picking it up in from those wind rows that you can had created and it goes in and it you know you got your twine big giant bales of twine in there and it would uh, pick it up and go through the machine and it's like big old arm goes crunches it and puts it into the, the square blocks that you get and then the machine will tie it off and kick it out the back as it goes along it's kicking bales up onto the wagon and you'd be a member of the crew it's like two people in the back of the wet on the wagon you got one person running the tractor, then you got two people. Sometimes you could have one back there, depending on how big they are. You know, if they were, uh, we were just young guys, teenagers mostly. But it's two of us, so the oldest one is the the one that picks them up off when they come off the the baler, and then flip them up to the the guy that's um, stacking it on the back of the wagon. do that all day where you're flipping around 50 pound 75 pound bales by the end of the season starting in june through september let me tell you you're pretty strong and that's why you see a lot of farm boys are pretty big living on a farm isn't easy you get all the kids that live in cities that Oh, life is so hard. Dad's making me go out and mow the lawn. It sucks. This is so hard. I'm like, really? Seriously? <laughs> no. You got it easy, pal. And my brothers and I, there, was, there were five of us. We were a crew. And they would hire us. Uh, as a crew, we would go along and go from one farm to the next. We did our own farm. And then and help out the neighbors they'd pay us a whopping usually a buck or two bucks an hour which back in the 70s early 80s was money i remember my first job i got was being paid 289 an hour and that was minimum wage so getting two bucks an hour under the table yeah that was good that was pretty decent money back then as a kid uh, but there was not without its uh, problems. There are times when things can go wrong. 
Like, uh, one time, I was the, the one that was stacking the bales on the back of the wagon. And my uh, neighbor who, who we were bailing for, we needed in his wagon, one of his wagons. We, typically, we had our own gear, so we would just... Um, show up with our own stuff, equipment, most of the time. Because we had our, you know, two, three uh, wagon loads. And at that day, we were short people in the barn, but we said, oh, okay, we'll just bail everything up, and then we'll flip around and go into the barn and stack the hay in the barn. And we were using one of his wagons, and let's go against the grain here. And he did not pin his wagons what i mean by pin all right there's the the, the trail well the, the wheel set you know with the, the framework and everything and you have the wagon would be put on top of it and then you have probably two whole pins that you would run through the uh front and back to uh, keep the wagon from floating around on top of the, the framework well, he didn't pin his, and so I was back on the very top of the stack back there. You, said, you look at the wagon, has got that back in a, like an L-shaped system where you stack it up on the back of it with the bales. And I was up on the top. We were probably oh, five bales deep by this time and working our way forward. And we put, hit a bump or something, and it was just enough to tip us. So the wagon went like this. So there's the frame here, and then the wagon just goes like that. And I'm up on top. So I went, and the bales, when it happened, went falling forward. And... I went flying, I went flying forward, and I met the wagon, kink, like that splat. You ever watch the Roadrunner uh, Coyote, where they smack into a wall? That was me, like splat. I was like, bounced off that thing, I was like, oh my gosh, I, had, I was skinned up. Like, I caught myself like this, my hands and my arms right here were like skinned up, because I just plowed into that wood. That was a painful experience. Oh, uh, yeah. So, that was one experience. It's like the neighbor, he hadn't seen it happen or heard it happen. And we were yelling at him, and he kept on driving. And eventually, the, uh, the wagon itself came off the, the frame, <laughs> slid off onto the ground, and he kept he kept on bailing, and so bales were like tink tink coming off, and he goes when it gets to the end, and he turns around because he was just tired and in his own type of thing. Turns around, he goes, whoa, what the heck happened? We're like, hey, we're over here, <laughs> clear across the field. So he came back with the the baler and turned he turned the PTO off and brought it back to us and and uh, we had a heck of a time. We brought another tractor out with a bucket to lift it up and the front end and eventually we got it pushed back on the frame. Yeah, that was an interesting day. It's like you're right. I'm hurting. Anything broke? No. So I ended up getting band-aid up. Scaring out of scrape, got bruised. Got like a fly in a fly swatter. But there was other times, like I say, if you were in the in the barn, especially in our own barn. Dad hated it, but we would 
it's like, hey, we're up there stacking this stuff. We would stack and make forest inside the barn, inside the hay. And we would uh, make tunnels and everything that was underneath. So you could go through the entrance. It was like a hay maze in the dark, you know, that you could crawl around in the hay maze inside. And we'd make a centralized fort area where you could sit in and kick back and we'd bring our comics and stuff in there and sit back and with the flashlights. And when I got older, you know, it's like I'm bleeding. Why the fracking hell am I bleeding? Am I bleeding on my hand? I must have caught myself somehow. And everybody did it. They might write a passage yet, everybody. It's like, it was a thing handed down since the day of people started bailing away of young kids. I think I nicked myself with my cord and my blade or something somehow. There is a bit of overhang on this thing. So I must have uh, caught myself. But yeah, we'd sit there and maybe in the winter time, you know, you go in there and it'd be warm. And we had haystacks outside too. Because if you had a really good year, a little bump right there too. If you had a real good year of harvest, you know, you it would fill up the barn, and you have to have a stack outside. And bale, you cover it with a big tarp. Me do the same thing. And yeah, you know, we would uh, go through and. Um, tie it in with our snow forts, you know, because we'd push the, yeah, the blade on the front of the tractor and push it, and between that and a bucket on one of the other tractors, you would push it a big giant mound of snow on, on both sides of that, the yard. And we always tie one, if we had a haystack, we would tie it in together with uh, the hay. So we'd have a snow fort and a hay fort all at once. The fallback position. of my little pinky right there let's see that yeah there's a little bump there I think I caught so it is time for the alum block you know this works out a little stinging any stinging elsewhere nope No stinging at all. Just that one spot right there. And my finger. Not good, but hey, it is what it is. Rinse this off a little bit. Mm. It's been a long time since I cut a finger with that razor. It's typically, uh oh, I'm in trouble. The wife's not going to be happy. I better rinse this 
I'll have to soak that up. Got blood on the bed. Or the towels. It's kind of hurt. Yeah, it's coming out. Shh, don't tell anybody. Yeah, I'd be in trouble. She'd be like, you got blood on my bed. <clears throat> New towels. Oh, sorry. All right, a little bit of Stetson. I love the smell of Stetson. Ooh, a little too much. Oh, well. Mmm. Ah, it smells good. Interesting combination. It's, uh... Combining with the uh, Ramblin' Man a bit, that cedar coming out, a little bit of citrus, but there we go, Stetson, a classic shave, aftershave. Alright, so that was Ramblin' Man with a rambling story about baling hay. There you go. Mmm, smells good. Maybe sometime I have to get a uh, puck of that, or a uh, not a, a tub of it. But that was the uh, crisp razor with some Aster blades. Well, obviously we know that it does a good job of taking off tops of bumps. So we'll shave that off real good right there. But other than that, that seems to be the shave of the day here. So I hope you like it. So hit the likes. And subscribe button and this goes out to uh, Sig if he's watched this far along congratulations Sig on making it over a thousand subs in one day it went from like 300 to over last I looked it was like 1300 did that in one day so congratulations Sig all right so we'll all talk to y'all later